Did you know that approximately 11% of the US population is afraid of the dark? What a bunch of babies. Well, that statistic comes to us from clinical psychologist John Mayer. Uh, that's frightening. I'll be honest, I hide under the occasional cover thinking someone's breaking into my triple bolted apartment. It could happen. Now, I've been this way pretty much my whole life, uh, and I gotta say, it makes no sense, but I do have some context. My oldest memories probably go back to when I was like three or four years old, um, and of those memories, one of the most distinct ones is of the family computer that we had in the kitchen of my old house. It was one of those really chunky ones with like the, the alien probe looking microphone you know, you really core memory stuff. Why it was in the kitchen, though, doesn't really matter because all I remember doing on it was playing one specific game, Pajama Sam. No need to hide when it's dark outside. There's no need to hide when it's dark outside. No need to hide when it's dark outside. Besides that tagline being an absolute bar, uh, it's an absolute understatement for what this game is about to teach us. Released in 1996 by video game developer Humongous Entertainment, No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside is actually the first of four games in the Pajama Sam series. And let me tell you, as a kid in the early 2000s, these games were an absolute treat to play. They were simple point and click adventures that taught us about basic life shit. Now point and click games suck. Now you gotta log 40 hours into FNAF 2020 2020 mode just to get a fraction of the game's story. And then you gotta play the other 50. Why waste your time playing a game about deceased children when you can spend like an hour playing as one that's normal and very much alive? That, folks, is a groundbreaking question that I hope to answer for you today. So snuggle up, turn out the lights, and get ready for... This lever will activate my blackout generator and the world will be thrown into eternal night. Not so fast, doctors. What? Pajama Man! So our exposition introduces us to the comic book character Pajama Man, who we will assume based on the four games worth of content is Sam's hero. Hey, if you ask me, I think I think the kid needs to spend some time outside when it's not dark, huh? Hey, guys, come on. Hey, no, I'm, 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 the, I'm the good guy. I don't know what it is about this art style that's so captivating to me. Uh, maybe it's the fact that it's so deeply ingrained in my memory, or maybe it's the fact that it just fucking rocks, dude. I mean, just look at how excited I was to hop back into Sam's room. I after all these years. Sorry, Ed. We're playing Pajama Sam. God, everything about this, like every single bit of this room is so nostalgic. Oh, and by the way, this gameplay was filmed months ago. Look, I'm, I'm still in my old apartment. <laughs> Sorry it took me so long. Now, in order to fight the darkness, you need three specific items. You need the signature mask, you need the flashlight, and you need the Pajama Man lunchbox. By the way, I love the idea of a flashlight essentially acting as a gun in this story. I feel like it perfectly captures the ideas of a child. You know what I mean? Like, didn't we all wave a flashlight around the house like we were pretending to singe our family with a flamethrower. See, you, you did it? Mere minutes into my recent playthrough, I started to get super cocky about finding all of the items in the room. Let's see what we got in here. Here's my flashlight underneath. Too all easy. My and that's awesome because if I were struggling in the game intended for ages three to eight, uh, I think we'd have a bigger problem on our hands here. It's like they. It's almost like they made this game for children. Once you find all those items, there's this epic suit up sequence that again is so charmingly animated. I mean, it eats Marvel as a side dish. And finally, we enter the closet where the real journey begins. Hello, is anybody in here? Darkness, hello? Oh, holy shit, Sam, no, oh God, he's just a kid. I was, this is, what a cool intro, though. It's such a cool intro. But yeah, as terrifying as it is, that intro rules, dude. I, I can't think of a single game that has a better intro. Ghost of Tsushima. Nice horse, loser. I just fell a thousand feet into my closet. You have no idea how many times I tried to do that when I was a kid. Like, I I'm dead serious. Uh, that and I would jump off the top of my bunk bed to prove that it didn't hurt. So now we're in the land of darkness, which first of all, uh, I, I would love to have a session of tranquility in. Second of all, there's so much that you can interact with in each location. The game allows you to get distracted and still stay on track, which means you can be unbelievably stupid and still complete this game in one sitting. Now you've probably heard Sam's voice quite a bit so far, uh, which means you've also probably noticed that it sounds like he's consistently trying to take a shit. This looks like we're dark. Darkness lives all right. I better go find him before mom notices him. But this voice sounded incredibly familiar to me. So incredibly familiar to me that I was like, hey, this voice sounds incredibly familiar. It's Bobby. 
Bobby from King of the Hill, Pamela Adlon. Okay, so we're trying to get this plank of wood in the water. Uh, can't reach that. So you have to run deeper into the woods. And let me tell you, this guy fucking sprints, okay? Until finally, we run into our first obstacle. Why am I, like, trying to be... Whoa! No, no, no! Okay, before I move on, I feel like I need to address the fact that this is the second time on this channel that I've run into talking trees. Uh, honestly, just really happy they don't have dicks this time. But these trees, dude, they have been locked in, like, the deepest corner of my brain for years. Uh, and honestly, now that I'm looking at them again, my big takeaway is, uh, they, they all have different noses. Uh, how about that? Well, 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 what have we here? Hey. Like a flashlight. <laughs> Did he just say flashlight? Flashlight. <laughs> like, look at this guy. He's like, is it a flashlight? No, no. See, I was wrong the whole time. They're all connected. Like, these trees are the ones that sell the products to the other trees. Because the, the other trees, they have... They... They have cocks. Speaking of items and products, these guys just take Sam's and he's like, Hey, I need those. But then the trees are just like, uh, bye. And see, that's nice and easy, you know? No boss battle, no challenge. Uh, only thing I'm worried about, though... What are they going to do with that flashlight? Now what do I do? Well, you're going to continue on with the game because it's here that we find our first <laughs> sock. Now, this aspect of the game is awesome because the socks are pretty easy to find and it also teaches kids that, hey, <laughs> maybe doing laundry, it is fun. <laughs> And maybe doing chores, too. We should do more chores. Once you click on the rope, you manage to get out of the trap, and that's when you meet this nice tree, and she's like, here, why don't you take my rope? Hey, why didn't you back me up like a minute ago? Okay, like, clearly you know those other trees. You, you could have just said something, you know, like, hey, stop that. Dude, I was literally attached to you. You could have, like, flung me. Sorry if I sound a little weird and clownish today. I'm sick once again. <laughs> I don't know how it keeps happening. Then you come to this crossroad that's kind of the main hub of the map, and it's gorgeous, you know? Uh, this is all it needs is, like, a, a smoke shop and a McDonald's. That scary-looking place up there must be Darkness's house. I'll bet that's where I'll find him. The first place we need to head to is the boat dock, and here we meet Otto. He is a talking wooden boat and maybe a conspiracy theorist? But what floats? No, I don't think so. I had this friend and he told me this story about his dentist brother who, um, he was made of wood and he got in the water and he sank. Really? And that's a really odd character trait to give to a talking boat, but I don't really mind it because of how good the voice acting in this game is. I, I don't know why I haven't pointed it out yet. Each character has been so unique. So we go back to the bridge, sling our rope in the water, grab the wood, run back to Otto, toss that bitch in the water, and yeah, just gonna cut myself off here for a second. Otto has this weird moment where he dips his toes or like his boat corner or whatever into the water and they make his body all gross and curvature. Ugh. Uh, is, is anyone else feeling a little a little sick. I'm doing it. I'm floating. So Otto can give you rides places now, which is pretty sick. Uh, the first place you have to go is this little island here. Uh, let's call it Burger and Fry Island. Maybe there's a frog in it or something. Rats, there's nothing in here at all. Yes, I'm definitely stuck. I wonder how Pajama Man would handle this. Probably wouldn't be a dumb idiot, but this ends up working out because after stumbling through the forest, you run into another group of trees that are like, yeah, yeah, he's like us. Good day to you, fellow tree. Fun fact though, if you try to go through the forest without the log on your head, they actually stop you and you have this little scene with them. They're really fucking rude. I'm sorry if I offended you. May I pass through? No. No. This is an exclusive road. It's for trees only. Just wait until Sam runs into the talking matchbook. What's gonna happen then? Anyway, when you get through that, you end up getting the log off your head and you find this garden where- Oh shit, it's the mask! Is that my pajama Sam mask? This mask belongs to the people. Yeah, so this is social activist Carrot. His goal is to liberate vegetables by making them the main dish. But I think that's pretty dumb, uh, cause you have you ever heard of uh, zucchini bread? Or eggplant parm? Yeah, okay, that's it. Well, he's gonna join us for now until we can get to the kitchen. But in the meantime, we're gonna hop back on auto for another adventure. There's this angry bridge who requires a toll, so fuck that guy, hate his energy. Then you get to this little dock house thing where you get this can of oil. Oh, and this next part is one of my favorites. Oh shit, here we go. Oh, ah, ah. Why is this like the most fun I've had in a long time? What went wrong? <laughs> Wasn't that thing that I just said so funny? <laughs> 
Maybe it was the funniest thing that I've said ever. Welcome to an impromptu section of this video that I like to call Dark Facts. No games, no gimmicks, I'm simply going to give you fun facts about the dark. When it's dark, your brain produces more melatonin, making you sleepy. Wow, what do you know? I don't even have to buy it anymore, I can just turn the lights off. <laughs> Do you guys even like dark facts? Like, is, is this stupid? Get this, I got, I got this one on Kid Search, okay? Uh, these are supposed to be fun facts for kids. In mythology, darkness is often connected with evil. Many people are uncomfortable or afraid when in the dark. <laughs> Especially children. Boy, oh boy, am I feeling better after reading that. I actually got a little curious here on Kid Search. Uh, turns out you can gain a plethora of knowledge about death uh, if you're into that. Here's one more from factsjustforkids.com. Number 17. Darkness looks black. If I walk into my kid's room in 20 years and I see that they don't have factsjustforkids.com pulled up, I'm gonna assume that they're failing all of their classes. All right, enough of that. I, I think this was literally pointless. Let's get back to Sam. Yeah, that was fun. Let's do it again. Um, how about not right away, okay? Why? Are you always ruining the fun? Sorry guys, you didn't see this, but during the dark facts section, Otto jumped out of the screen and tried to fuck me. Good thing we landed here though, because this, mm, this is one of my favorite spots in the game, baby. I like it for no reason other than the fact that it's just one of those images that's burned into my brain. You know, it just releases that comfort feeling. That's one of the things that I love so much about this game. I mean, all you really have to do is just click a couple items. The rest is watching fun cutscenes and getting to enjoy the well-illustrated map. In fact, this game functions much like an episode of a cartoon and even throws in bits that would typically fly over a kid's head. Like for instance, when you click on this geyser, Otto literally just starts going on an educational tangent. A geyser. It's kind of a hot spring that spurts up water and steam every so often. It works kind of like a coffee percolator. Water in passages deep down where the rocks are hot gets heated up the water on top of pushes some of the colder water out of sudden the hot water along with all the colder water on top all right man that's great take care and that's about it for the auto adventure uh we'll get back to him later when we have to go give the gold to the bridge guy but in the meantime we're headed to the mines baby and i mean just look at this place look how warm and crisp it looks you know i just i just want to crawl on the walls and and pee and stuff anyway we meet this old mine cart named king which is a pretty cool name but his character trait is well <laughs> you guessed it depression look I, i'm sorry kid i'm just real depressed is all yeah. oh damn but fortunately for us we have the oil can which actually now that i think about it we straight up just stole it from someone so we butter that sucker up and he says Yahoo! and i guess this means he's not depressed anymore uh so guys just remember if you ever feeling depressed you don't cover your entire body in motor oil well listen sam king owes you big time anytime you need a ride through the mines the king will take you we need a ride now can you give us a ride now, King? As soon as you take off, you take off. Like, look. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, look at this room. Like, come on. Look how fucking cool the design is. That's not even it either. Look, there's this little guy who jumps out of this machine and he just ends it all. For no reason. In the next room, you acquire a pickaxe and King asks a highly valid question. What are you going to do with that? You'll see. Well, I just want... What are you gonna do? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this room may not seem like much, but what if I told you that it's so much? You can go to this little terminal and play the most boring game of all time, but it doesn't matter because it's so cool. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I have a feeling that the past minute or so of this video has been rather whiplash inducing and I don't like that because I have a big motion sickness issue and I'd probably already be chunking by now. So I'm going to try my best to calm down a little bit um, and it's probably not going to work. You'd be very happy to know that along this journey, we do end up finding a little chunk of gold. Wow, this must be gold. Yeah, no shit, dude. Hey, also, what the fuck are you? Like, what even is Sam? Because like, this is not reading human. It, it kind of just looks like he's made of hair, uh, but also it looks like Pajama Man is made out of hair. So is Sam's world just filled with a bunch of people who are made of blue hair? 
What kind of maniacal god would create something like that? Anyway, there's like a shit ton of socks to collect in the mines, so you can scoop those up if you want to. But for some reason, when I was playing through, I was obsessed with the idea that there was a sock in the actual laundry room menu. If I recall, there's a sock in this room, isn't there? Isn't there another sock in this room? I, I could have sworn there was. Once you get that out of the way, though, you can finally leave the mines. I say finally like it's such a relief, but to be fair, I think that might be the best part of the game. The constant rail travel is such a good time to sit back and watch, and once again, it requires you to do very little. Not to mention, we're only 25 minutes into the playtime of this game, and the playtime is like under an hour. That being said, the game doesn't give too much, but the highs that it consistently provides makes each moment more worthy. <gasps> Yep, this is Darkness's house, all right. Now we finally arrived at Darkness's house, and that sounds really scary but it's actually the coolest place of all time. In order to actually get up there, you have to hop in this little carriage and throw these rocks into a bucket to pull yourself up, but you can't reach the rocks initially. And instead of the game making you struggle, the rocks become sentient and just jump into your hand. Hello? Anybody home? Okay, so you basically got three pathways in Darkness's house. The first one is a little bit hard for me to talk about. It's the kitchen. And look, from all angles, the room actually rocks. You click on all of the items and they sing. I will say, I'm a big fan of the voice acting in this game. Just gotta investigate. Let's see what they have to say. He drinks so much, you think he'd burst. He drank so much. Drank so much what? And that's great, right? That's so awesome. You know, I love inanimate objects singing and talking to me. It's been happening the whole game. But on my playthrough of the game, I must have done something horribly wrong because I ended up listening to the fridge sing over and over again for about 15 minutes. Happens when you are tasty food. Bad I'm holding for the huge green salad. What is happening? Bad, I'm holding for the huge green salad. Stop singing about the green salad. I think I'm stuck. <laughs> I broke it. Bad, I'm holding for the huge green salad. Green salad. It would seem that the correct way to do it is to first acquire the carrot. Because when you do, you are presented with, well, you guessed it, <laughs> a full musical number. I'm just going to talk over it because it's seriously impressive. But like, this is a full ensemble number about the liberation of the carrots. Incredibly entertaining. But what are they going to do next? Oh, by the way, we got our mask back as well. Do you even care? Next room is epic. It's just a bunch of dancing furniture. But when they see you, they go back to being normal. So clearly they just, you know, they fucking hate us. So like, uh, should I quit the game? Because as you know, no one can pass through the doors of knowledge without first playing... The brain okay, yeah, I was gonna say that you meet these talking doors, but I feel like I've said the phrase and then you meet these talking blank like multiple times in the video so far. The Brain Tickler is pretty much just a trivia game you have to play to get the doors open. The questions are super easy and usually only one of them requires you to think about things you've done in the game so far. So, you know, that's nice. Now I'm gonna start to get a bit general because once you enter the doors, it basically just turns into a whole nother world of doors where you can go into doors and there's more doors. There's a room with talking objects, uh, again. And in this room, you have to swing on this chandelier to get these oars. Then there's another room that has this bookshelf that actually turns out to be a secret door, which leads down to a secret potion lab where you can try a bunch of different potions on yourself. Best part about it? has nothing to do with beating the game. There's actually this one potion that's pretty grotesque. Uh, surprisingly, it's the music potion. This cello pops out of nowhere and mangles your body into the shape of a bow. N no consent, mind you. But after doing a little healing from that experience, we're all but ready to take on darkness. Hey, hey. See, that's what I have to do. I just have to stand here and sit with it. You know, I feel like when you get to this point in the game, you become satisfied with your adventure. And that's amazing. Uh, mainly because we're pretty much done with the game. In order to get to the final section of the game, though, you do have to do a little bit of backtracking. You have to take that gold to the bridge to pay the toll, but you end up finding out that it's useless. How useless, you may ask? Well, would you pay a massive chunk of gold to play tic-tac-toe with a toaster? Then you get to actually go into that outhouse where you got the oil can earlier 
earlier and you find the flashlight. Ooh, one item left. Guys, I'm really sorry about that. Then you ride down this waterfall with the oars, hop in this bucket, meet another talking thing, get your lunchbox, and now, now it's time. Now you'd think the following events would be pretty epic, right? You know, defeating darkness, becoming pajama man, you know, maybe meeting the sly fucker himself. Well, guess what? That doesn't happen, because when you go into Darkness's room, it actually looks a lot like your own. And when you unlock the closet and finally get to him, you find out that he's depressed and has no friends. Why are so many people here depressed? Like, there's so many fun characters doing fun things. Like, why, why, why don't they just, uh, why don't they meet up and hang out? Well, that's exactly what you do. You sit down with Darkness to play cheese and crackers, and the game is over. If you ask me, I think someone dying would have been pretty cool. And isn't that such an interesting way to experience a game, watching a guy kind of, you know, lose his mind and just talk about it? You don't even get to play the game, you just listen to the guy talk about it? The guy is me. I held off on doing this project for a really long time, uh, and it was because it was a really comforting project to even initially start on, you know? Other than this video being funny, I feel like this video was very necessary for me in a weird way. When I sat down to play this game a few months ago, it was a really interesting experience because I was at a kind of low point and playing it was almost uh, uh, very comforting in a way. It sounds like I'm way over intellectualizing this process, but uh, I mean, it's serious, okay? Guys, let me be serious. I'm opening up here. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please be sure to interact and like and subscribe. Uh, let's let's skip that part. Well, guys, as always, that's all I really have for you this time. But until next time, I was going to show you what's down the hallway lighting this right now. But uh, I don't know. I don't want to give away like too much of my home. Something I'm very serious about. Okay. Well, this seems like a good place to cut it off. Time to become Pajama Man.